Welcome back guys. It is so good to be here yet again for another amazing video that we're gonna be showing you a twist on a trend that's really super happening right now. So stay tuned guys. It's gonna be fabulous. Video's coming right up. Shags. We're going to be doing a shag today and a shag is something that if you guys aren't fully aware of my last videos that I've done, I've done a shag with blunt fringe, I've done a shag with curtain fringe. So I'm going to go ahead and link those right over here so you can check those out if you have not watched those. But in today's video, we're just going to be doing a shag without any sort of fringe. Of course, it's going to have a swept fringe because we're going to make it shorter, but it's not going to be like a designated fringe. Everything is going to go from like the shortest point here, and then it's just going to taper all the way back like that. So you could essentially have fringe, but it's not going to be parted off to have fringe. So let's go ahead and start parting this off. We're gonna be using a blunt scissor, a texturizer, razor, all these different types of tools to create maximum amount of movement and texture within this shape. So let's go ahead and do that now. So, First thing, we're gonna start off with the center part. That's super, super important, okay? Between the frontal area, where essentially the fringe would be, and then the side area right through here, we're going to connect all of this. This is all just going to be the definition of a shag. So between the frontal area, the side area, the back area, this is going to be a shag. We're gonna be doing a lot of subsections. Now that first subsection that we're going to do is we're going to mimic the hairline and we wanna make sure, so we're gonna take this back just like this and we're gonna go in about, I would say, I would say three quarters of an inch, okay? That's super, super important right through there. Now, the one thing I want you to show, so let's come right over here. Now, if I go straight back on a mirroring the hairline right through here, you can see how it's a lot thinner between this area. So one of the things I would say to say this is to mimic exactly how that hairline looks. And so now you can see how I just took that a little bit thicker between this point right through here because the consistency of your section needs to be consistent right through that specific area. So it's gonna be much easier to follow your guide if you mirror your actual hairline right through there. So I'm gonna be using a razor to cut the front, the initial first guide. I'm gonna be using a straight edge razor. One little tip and trick, this is considered the heel, this is considered the toe. Now when you're going to be cutting left like this, you're gonna be using the heel. When you're gonna be cutting right over here on this side, you're gonna be using the toe. So keep that in mind, you know, because you can actually use that to your advantage by cutting and knowing how to use your razor. So let's go ahead and cut this initial first section right through here. Couple things to keep in mind when you are doing this, right? Try and stand directly in front of whatever it is that you are cutting. And as you can see, as I took this, and as I was cutting with that heel, you guys can see I was cutting that down just like that. And then as I was cutting this side, you know, I was cutting with that toe as well. So you guys want to make sure, again, this is, I'm just trying to balance this out as perfect as possible. Okay, this is just the initial first shape that we've cut in here. 
Now I'm going to go through and I'm just going to take my sections back, the same sections that I took to mimic the hairline. Let's go ahead and do that on the left and the right side and tell this hair, and I'm going to take a lot of this hair to where this hair doesn't reach anymore, okay? Because if I start to put a lot of this hair and I start to bring this forward, progressively this hair is gonna get a lot longer back through here. going to recap really really quick okay so again hairline mimic the hairline and then I just took those sections all the way back into where even this hair it doesn't live up through here but I wanted to push all of this forward so we can keep that same flow going short to long back through here I'm going to dry this shape right now and I'm going to cut everything else dry that's when we're going to really texturize and really just bring this alive so as I start to dry this, I'm going to be pushing everything down, okay, in its natural falling position. What I mean by that is I want this fringe to come down, I want this to come down, and you could essentially like push this all back, you could have it come under. You know, I'm gonna push it back just a little bit, but I'm gonna show you how I use my Mason Pearson style brush. If you don't have a brush like this, I'd recommend it. I'm gonna go ahead and link one below. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of a round brush as well to kind of give it a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a bend to it. So when it comes down to using a product, right? I'm gonna be using something from Shuamora. If you've never tried this product right here and the packaging actually has changed. So I'm gonna go ahead and link the newest one below. Uh, this is a product I got like a year ago, and so they've actually just redesigned the packaging. You want to use about this much, okay? And we're going to be using this on wet hair, okay? Now, when you go to apply a product like this, you know, it'll come off where you can kind of see it in your hands, a little bit like that. And we're really just going to start to kind of look, you know, really just push this into the ends, just like, just like so. We're not going to apply too much at the root. We just wanna really get a little bit of texture in the hair. Because when you're styling a shag, you know, a lot of times when you have the right type of product in there, it's really gonna give just an amazing type of definition. So that is like super important, okay? You wanna start with the right type of product when it's wet. styling I really thought I was going to use a round brush to really finish off those ends I really didn't I use this brush right through here this brush is amazing if you guys don't have it if you're a consumer watching I would suggest you get it or if you're a hairdresser watching you don't have it I would suggest you getting it I'm gonna go ahead and link it below it's amazing okay now I was using this brush and I was going in to really create that nice kind of roll back now as you can see it doesn't look too flippy if I was gonna use a round brush, that flip essentially would get really too strong. I personally really like where it is today, just like this. The really cool thing I really wanna show you guys as well is that, okay, this is basically everything kind of combed down, super flat on the top, nice little roll. Now watch this. I'm gonna go ahead and brush this out really quick, just a little bit, starting at the top area. And you can see how much kind of like width this gives right through here just by adding a little bit more of a brush kind of getting it off of the scalp i mean really at the end of the day she can't see just yet so we're going to go ahead and we're going to take some of that hair out but if you're liking it just like that i mean that would look amazing as well so guys if you're talking about a shag this is the absolute pinnacle definition of a shag Again, let's go through, let's remove a little bit of weight. I, for one, think this is looking amazing as is right now, but let's go ahead and take it 
up a notch. Let's take it from ordinary to extraordinary. Boom, let's do that now. So one thing I want you guys to keep in mind as I was going through and I was just adding this texture over here on this side. Now you can see how I have not added any texture over through here and it looks, you know, of course this is going to be not as frothy over through this specific area. The texture is now starting to look, you know, a lot bigger through here. Now this creates a lot of width in this specific area. Now me over directing this up here instead of down through this area is going to keep that nice line along the bottom. So again, I over direct it up straight up like that. Over through here, I'm gonna go ahead and take, let's go ahead and continue this like we did on the other side. Okay guys, so now you can see that as we started to remove some of that texture right behind that initial like perimeter, you know, up through this specific area. Now the really cool thing is it's really starting to look really kind of rock and roll. That's what I like about it. You're starting to see some of these ends that look a little bit see-through and they create that really, really cool texture. Now what I think is super important is to get in this specific area, in that fringe area to where she can start to see through. I mean, this would even look amazing on a mat. This essentially is super rock and roll. I mean, this would be like, that 70s, that 60s kind of like shag that's just amazing. And if my hair would do this, I would do this for sure. But I think my hair would look like, I'd look like an unemployed porn star from the 70s probably, you know. I'd have to get like a little mustache and you know, you know how that would look. But anyways, with this guys, let's go ahead and like break open this specific area now we wanna keep the same consistency and the same flow happening in here. So I'm gonna go through with a razor. Now this razor is, I want to use this razor and I'm just going to carve out pieces. Now I'm gonna take essentially a piece like this. Now I'm gonna go in and I just wanna take out some hair and kind of lightly, I don't wanna take off any necessarily, I don't wanna take off any of the perimeter because I feel that this length is absolutely awesome. Now, we don't wanna have it look to where, you know, you have this look to where it's like a structured kind of like fringe. Like that's not gonna keep the same consistency and flow happening throughout this haircut. So having hair on the eyes kind of goes with this shape. Now, again, we're in customer service, guys, so you have to make sure that it's still working for that customer. Now, if somebody was to come see me and they're like, ah, you know, like, I don't know if I necessarily like want it right in my eyes. Now, you know, that's something you probably hopefully should have discussed from the very beginning. You know, um, you can always alter those specific things. But when I go in here, I really just kind of want to make it to where you can start to kind of see through a little bit of that fringe area, like some shorter bits through here. I can maybe take this this one right through here and I'm gonna carve it and I'm gonna keep it going in the same flow as the actual shape itself. So it goes from like short to long that way through there. And so we can kind of push that out of her eyes right through there. So it's all personal preference when you guys are doing this. If you're doing this on yourself, well, that's awesome. If you're not doing this on yourself and you're having a professional do it, even better. Another cool way to go about this would be going in with the same kind of texturizer that you had from before. And I'm just kind of lightening up some of those initial like thick pieces. And 
just making that to where she can, she and or he can see right through there. You can see how that, that width and that texture and that product I put in there before is already getting it to piece out really, really nicely. So making sure you have some sort of a foundation in there before you put that finishing product in there will make a huge difference when it comes down to getting that shape rocking. When it comes down to giving even more definition in a shape like this, we're gonna use this clay definer. This is also from Shuamora. This is a product I actually use in my hair. It's got a little bit more of a matte texture to it. And when you go to put this product throughout the hair, you want to, you want to rub it around super well. That's super important, guys, because we want to make this look even more rock and roll. Now using something a little bit more matte is going to bring out that texture because I don't really want a ton of shine in it. I really just want it to have that very rock and roll kind of shag effect to it. Almost second day hair. Like your hair's a little bit more slept on. The thing that is so, so important whenever you're styling is to make sure everything is just balanced. Balanced, balanced, balanced. I hope you guys enjoyed my variation of a shag. It's super rock and roll. I actually came up with it halfway through cutting this. I was like, man, this is actually looking super rock and roll. Shags are rock and roll. If you really kind of look at the lifespan of a shag, they can be very commercial. They can be very rock and roll. They can be very just, you know, sh shags were essentially people just gathering all their hair, cutting it in the front and just kind of letting it be, right? So this right here is going to be the closest technical version of somebody cutting their own shag, okay? So I really sincerely hope you guys enjoyed it. I really do. Thanks for checking out my channel, guys. If you made it this far, rock and roll, rock and roll, rock and roll. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, guys. I honestly, truly appreciate it. Thank you. And I will see you guys in the next video.